we want your um, perspective here in, in two primary ways. We think of this, we think of contract negotiations as a, a two-sided process. On the one hand, anytime we go into a round of bargaining, we're hoping to achieve new gains for our members. So we wanna hear from you about the things that you want added to our contract. We wanna hear about the things that are in our contract that aren't working well enough for you, how they can be revised or expanded, or some of the things in our contract that we need to get rid of that are that are harming our members. So, so on the one hand, we want you to help orient us to the affirmative gains we want. On the other hand, we know that the state will come after us with a series of demands for concessions. And so we're also really interested to hear from you all what parts of the contract you consider sacrosanct. The state almost certainly will be coming uh, with demands on healthcare costs and, and, and um, eligibility and so forth. So we wanna hear from you about what we absolutely need to protect as we go. The, the most important feature here is that unlike a lot of other state higher ed unions, we don't negotiate with our campus or even with the SUNY system. We negotiate with New York State. So at the table on the other side, our counterparts are the representatives of the governor's office herself. So this is um, primarily through the governor's office of employees relations, although she may have um, at, you know, someone else working as the chief negotiator. Um, other state agencies will be there. The Division of Budget will certainly be there. Um, other agencies as well. SUNY is at the table. They're a crucial player at the table. They help us um, or they, they, they bargain with us most directly on a set of concrete operational needs about how our work is performed on SUNY campuses. And so SUNY has a say in how the contract responds to our demands around a lot of operational questions. But they don't have the final say. The final say is with the governor's office. Um, and, and with all of the big picture items, the money, the health benefits, provisions that are going to affect not only us, but other um, unions, it's going to be the governor's office that we're, that we're most directly engaging with. What that means is that the negotiations have different forms each round, and there's a lot of factors that are going to shape those negotiations. We know that the governor will be facing an election next year. She's going to be facing a primary in the summer and, and a general election in the fall. And, and um, uh, she may um, be interested in trying to work with state unions to, um, to you know, build some political capital there, or maybe not. We don't quite know yet. We're, we're eagerly hoping to be um, building a relationship with Governor Hochul and her, and her staff. Um, but there's some uncertainty there about how that process is going to play out and what the timeline is going to be. Um, we know that the economic climate is also somewhat uncertain. Um, the COVID crisis has been real. It has produced genuine economic disruptions. I think it's difficult for anyone to say with great certainty what the, um, what the uh, state's budgetary projections are going to look like um, exactly in the year out and, and in, in years beyond that. We know that we're dealing for the first time in quite some time with very, very high rates of, well, with high rates of inflation. Um, cost of, of living um, has, has risen notably in the last year. Whether that's a long-term trend or whether that's a short-term bump um, remains to be seen. We're interested in tracking what sorts of new revenues um, we uh, may be able to get into the state budget through political advocacy and, and otherwise. So, so the economic climate is going to shape the context in which we negotiate and we'll, we'll be you know, paying attention and actively intervening where we can. And lastly here, I think it's crucial to note that New York State is you know, by default, de facto, a pattern bargaining state. That means, it, you know, it, it has 12, uh, 10 different unions, 14 different bargaining units. Um, when it bargains a contract with one of those, particularly one of the bigger ones, but, but really with any of them, um, historically, those contract provisions often cascade in some um, fairly analogous form to the other units. And so the, the most important unions for us to be watching are CSEA and PEF. CSEA's contract has expired. Uh, as far as we can tell, they are sort of nominally in bargaining, but that they haven't really gotten to the table in any significant way with New York State and begun their contract process. Um, we'll see. Uh, PEF, their agreement, um, they signed an extender, and so they have uh, their expiration date is a year after ours. Um, in the past, we've been able to build some important coalitional, you know, um, uh, conversations with both PEP and CSEA, and I hope we'll be able to do something similar this time to work together with our fellow um, uh, state bargaining units to try to make sure that we're able to get the best kinds of contracts we can. Our timeline is this. Our agreement expires July 1 of next year. So this fall, 
we are in the midst of doing meetings just like this. We are visiting every single chapter. Um, we are uh, holding regional meetings like this. There are eight different regional meetings. As Fred mentioned, we're gonna be doing constituent group meetings in December. So those will be academics and professionals, health science center and hospital workers, contingents. We're gonna hold some separate statewide meetings for um, those employees to give, give another chance. There's a member survey that's out in your emails. Really want to encourage everybody to fill that survey out. Make your concerns known to us. Um, we take this feedback really seriously. We, we at, at, at UUP, we absolutely try to make sure that our negotiations team is working on behalf of the issues that our members have raised as our priorities. And so we go through this extensive months long process at the beginning to really make sure we understand what our members are telling us um, that, that they need bargained into this contract. So this is why we're here to, to get your feedback. We analyze that feedback. We're going to be working with our negotiations team. Um, we have a great team uh, ready to, to do the, the work of, of getting our, our contract into shape. We work with our team. We work with our negotiations committees. We're going to have representatives from every chapter, at least three representatives from every chapter as part of this process. Collectively, we spend a long time going through the member feedback and really working as a group to identify what the key priorities are for this, um, for this upcoming round, what, what needs to be in our demands when we go to the table with the state. Um, and so we try to do that as a whole union. Um, the, the first key document that we will develop is with our, is, it will be developed by our negotiations team. It'll be in the, in the early spring. It's our UUP conceptual proposals. This, um, is an overview document that outlines all the articles of the contract that we intend to bargain, that we open up for negotiations, and all the provisions that we will be um, planning to bargain for in this round. So it, it serves as a kind of first opening and an overview of all the demands. We'll be sharing that with all the members as we get it into shape so that you know what your union is coming to the table asking, demanding uh, of the state to give us. Um, it's our hope that we can get to the table with the state by late in the spring, April, May, we think it's unlikely that the state will be ready to meaningfully get to bargaining before the budget season in Albany is done. I can tell you that we will be ready. As soon as the state is ready, our team is ready. We will have done all of the work, all the research, all the preparation, and we'll be ready to move. Um, we know coming in that we have a number of core priorities that have been articulated by members and by our statewide officers and, and, and the negotiations team. And we know these are gonna be a core part of the demands that we bring to the table. We're gonna be fighting for fair and equitable salary increases for all of our members. We want those on base. We don't want them to sunset um, at the end of a contract. We wanna maximize the compensation that we can bring to our members. We know that getting gains for our contingent faculty is essential. We've been pleased that we've been able to make some important gains in past rounds, but we know there's enormous work to be done around job security, around compensation, around a whole lot of other issues. And so fighting for our contingents is crucial. We wanna push for um, provisions that allow for salary increases that are not purely discretionary as our DSI process is, but rather are tied to longevity. That may mean um, bargaining for step systems as we have proposed in the past and, and, and have fought for last time we fought for 18 months trying to establish a, a step system. Um, the compression money accomplishes this in some ways. We're eager to hear your, your experience with compression, um, how it's working for you and how it's not working. We're gonna review that compression process really carefully. We have a couple years of data on it now. We'll, we'll be evaluating how effective it's been. We have service awards. There are other means of establishing um, salary increases tied to longevity. So we're not, we're not suggesting that we have one model already um, defined ahead of time, but rather we know the principle is important that members should be able to expect regular incremental increases in their salary, predictable over the course of their career so that they know that their salary is gonna be moving up commensurately. We know that there are a range of issues particular to the kinds of work that take place in our hospitals and health science centers that need to be addressed. 
We're particularly interested in, in including residents in that, where we feel that our residents have not always been um, as fully incorporated into our contractual provisions as they might be. But there's a range of issues, residents plus a batch of other things that we know we need to get um, uh, on the table. And lastly, we know that the state will come after us with a series of demands for concessions around health care. They always do. It's an inevitable part of negotiations with state. Health care costs are so um, enormous. So we absolutely intend to be fighting for maximizing the eligibility and access to our health care, um, making our health care benefits as affordable as possible, uh, making sure that we have the same or even greater expanded coverage uh, of health benefits so that our members get the health care that they need. These are, these are priorities that we're going to be fighting for, we know going in. Um, it's our hope that we can be a little bit more focused and get to substantive negotiations with the state more quickly. We have a smaller team. We're trying to be a little bit more directive in these meetings and our surveys. We're trying to work with our committees to really identify key priorities up front. Um, this is because uh, we know that there are real consequences when members are working under an expired contract. Um, we know that a fast contract is not the same as a good contract, and, and, and it's our pledge to you that we're not going to bring back a contract that we're asking you to ratify until we think it's the best possible contract we can have bargained. Um, but we would like to move the process as quickly as possible and make use of any leverage that we may have based on timing and so forth. So we want to get to the we want to get to the core issues quickly with the state. Hopefully we'll be able to do that. When we bargain, it's crucial for us to recognize that we bargain for our whole unit for 37,000 members across the state. We have 32 chapters across 29 different campuses. As I said, we have hospitals and health science centers. We have research university centers. We have comprehensive campuses. We have tech campuses. Within each of those campuses, we have an enormous diversity of um, different types of work that our members do. So our contract has to be an umbrella. It has to be a balanced agreement and a comprehensive agreement that works for everybody, right? Uh, at the same time, when we go into negotiations, we're always thinking about the values that our union brings to the process. And those include things such as, you know, fighting for equity. That means getting something for everybody, but it means attending to inequities within our unit, um, disparities within our bargaining unit that we can correct through the contract. That means solidarity. It means fighting for people who don't have exactly the same kind of interests as we do as individuals. This is a contract that allows us to think about fighting for our other members who aren't identical with ourselves. Workers' agency is always crucial. The state will inevitably try to extend its managerial control and prerogative and discretion at every chance. It holds on to that guardedly. At the same time, it's our work in every contract to try to expand workers' agency, our ability for workers to control the decisions that most directly affect their lives. This is always a site of contention and we'll be fighting for it absolutely in, in, in a batch of different ways throughout the contract. Lastly, um, our contract, we want it to work for everybody, but we also want to make sure that we're paying particular attention to those who are the most vulnerable, those who are most exploited, those who have historically not been able to benefit from our contractual provisions and protections. Um, we keep that as a core value going in as well. Please feel free to email me, contract at uupmail.org. I'll respond to those, um, to those messages personally. And, and, and also, uh, again, please fill out those surveys. And, and cajole some of your colleagues into it. If, um, if you send them an, a, a direct email yourself, you're gonna get a lot better response than if, than if Fred or Andrew or Bruce or, or Martha or any of the other chapter presidents on our call today do it. Um, it it's great when it comes from our, our members and our friends and colleagues who work directly. So please help us to, to um, continue polling the members about what matters most. And, and what I've been saying to everybody is that uh, this is going to be a, a, an ongoing process. It's going to take us months to get to the table and get everything running. We're going to try to be as communicative as we can. So we're going to say goodbye for now. If For, for those chapters who we haven't visited yet, we'll see you on your chapters soon. For those who we have, um, we'll look forward to future communications through the committees, through other, through other means in the months ahead. Um, so, so until we see you again, thanks for your time and participation.